Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode in this engine tear down marathon. This particular engine here belongs to Ken from Minnesota. It's out of a 2013 Street Glide. And once again, you guys know the drill. We're gonna start at the top, work our way all the way to the bottom and see what surprises are inside. So stick around. Before we tear this one down, I wanna digress for a minute. I've mentioned before that I hide Easter eggs in several of the videos. A lot of times I will make a claim or a statement, and then I like to support that statement with content over the course of many videos following up after. Now, quite some time ago, I had made the comment that something isn't new. Something has been an issue and been a problem for a long time, but it seems like it's, it's only become widely known as a result of the M8s. Now, I made that statement a long time ago and then have begun to tear down these engines. So let's think back of all of the engines that we've torn down over many episodes. If you, if you recall, the 2007 96 inch that we tore down for Dorothy and Daryl, then it sumped severely. Then we had Stevens M8, his 2020, that sumped severely and took it down. And then now we've done a couple of 110s, we torn them down and saw severe something. And the thing that I want you guys to understand, again, that statement that I made back then, was you can't assume the cause. There are many different causes for something. And what you've seen over the course of these engines, we've seen crank run out being the cause, we've seen a bad oil pump, we've seen leaking piston oilers, we've seen an imp improper ring seal in the cylinder creating too much crankcase pressure. So there are various different things that can cause something. And that's one of the things I would like for you guys to take away as part of this series. Uh, just because you have a, a single condition doesn't mean you have a single cause of that condition. All right, so Ken's engine is gonna be a complete Skunk Works 117. Hey, you'll not start to notice a pattern too on these 117s, especially for the twin cams. And for long distance mileage, the 117 is one of my favorite engine formats. It, I, I tell all of our customers that that 117, it revs like a small block, but pulls like a big block. It's kind of the, the 427 in a Camaro, if you will, of, uh, of twin cam builds. It's not too much pressure on the thrust face of the pistons. You know, it's a good bore to stroke ratio. And uh, so that's why you're seeing a lot of 117s. That being said, full Skunk Works package, dark horse bottom end, Temkin bearing conversion, rods, everything done there. Our billet cylinders to perfection, our super duty pistons. We're going to go through the heads, do a complete skunk work series on the heads, and that's going to be quite a bit of head work on this one. We're also using all 12-point ARP bolts. You'll notice the bees that he's put in several places. Those are the items that we're going to be powder coating for him. Of course, we're going to run our blueprinted injectors, completely bulletproof the primary as well. Uh, it'll have a billet basket. It'll have a man of war uh, motor sprocket on it uh, and also the Baker tensioner. Okay, very similar to the engine we saw yesterday that had an exceptional amount of sludge on the automatic compression release. That's going to kind of be an indication we may have uh, some ring seal issues on this one with a bit of carbon on top of the piston. Now, this one isn't as bad as the one yesterday, but what I do see is while it doesn't have a lot of sludge built up on it, it is moist. You can see the, the stickiness there, so we're probably going to uh, see a not so great front cylinder. We're pretty much seeing the exact same thing on the rear one. Again, not a, a ton of sludge buildup there, but it is moist and it does have quite a bit of oil on the top of it. 
All right, we see the deposits. If you guys remember, I'm gonna show you close up on camera here. If you remember my how to read a spark plug video, one of the big things I mentioned was this, these white crystals that can develop on the base of the threads and also on the ground electrode. Those white crystals can be an indication of oil infiltration on the top of the piston. It could be anything from a porosity issue with the head. That was a problem back in around 2003, 2004. Oil would actually leach through the casting in the combustion chamber. It could be a valve stem seal issue. It could be a ring issue. But from what we saw on the compression release, I'd mentioned we have some moisture there, obviously some oil, and we can see these white crystals there again on the end of the plug, exactly like I mentioned in that how to read a spark plug video. And if you can look closely at the center porcelain, you will see those white deposits. Zinc, phosphorus, all the things that are in oil uh, can burn and give that appearance. So you see that on the spark plug, those white crystals and deposits are an indication of oil infiltration on top of the piston. So that's probably what we're going to find when we open it up. I will say, good on you, Ken. If you're the one that put on these uh, head bolt covers, Good on you for not tightening these things too tight. It's not uncommon at all. You know, it's a very small Allen. It's not uncommon at all. You know, you get a lot of corrosion in there, dissimilar metals and such, hidden from the environment, condensates. Uh, people will tighten these things down. They're very small Allens, and they can be very difficult to remove. And uh, if they're put on too tight, uh, it can take quite a bit of time to try to drill those out and get them off there just for the sake of removing head bolts. So, nice job, Ken. Now, if you remember with the two 110s that we've done, we had studs that had pulled out on the base of both of those. Let's see if uh, these are easy to pull out. So far, oh, wow. Well, that one's definitely not loose. So far, we're having pretty good luck with this engine, other than, you know, the potential for some blow-by and oil infiltration. We're actually doing pretty good on this one. So far, they all seem pretty tight. This one was slightly loose, but it could be because we loosened up the other three. So, so far, so good. Uh, that one was a little loose. And that one tight. All right, for some miles, uh, yeah, that's a good bit of oil carbon. We can see that build up there, especially here in this area. Uh, and actually quite a bit built up in the hole where the automatic compression release uh, would be. That's a good amount, but not anything that I'm overly surprised at with some miles on it. So it's not, uh, that's not too terrible. And we have pretty much the same condition with this one. Again, uh, you know, typical amount of carbon build up for some mileage, but nothing, nothing too major. Now the inside of the cylinder, you can get a little better idea of the amount of carbon that was actually on, on top of the piston. You can see these, see these chunks here. Uh, there is quite a, quite a good amount on top of the piston. And again, it's wet from oil infiltration. Now, when I look at the inside of the cylinder, this cylinder really does not look bad at all. You can see a you know, pretty good crosshatch pattern in there, if I can get the angle just right. So we've got a nice bit of the crosshatch remaining in here. We don't see any, any skips or anything like that that's going on. There is one area here where it's a, a bit smoother and glazed over, but again, not in absolutely terrible, terrible condition. Pretty much the exact same condition. It is worn a little more than this one. And it's it's got that 
type of pattern that I would typically see if maybe it was tuned a little too rich. Uh, but still, not horrendous. It's a little, little polished in there in a couple of places, but by far, by far in better condition than the other engines we've tore down at this point on those 110s. Which is also why you see that the heads don't look quite as bad. And also, at this point, the clues that we're seeing we're not seeing as much oil on the spark plugs. We didn't see it on the compression release. So, you know, in, so largely, um, the pattern that's leading us up to this point should indicate it's, it's not a terrible engine at this point. Now let's take a closer look at the pistons. Yes, that is a pretty good amount of carbon buildup. I'm not sure exactly how many miles Ken has on this. It is moist, but the rings themselves actually look like they had a relatively decent seal on the rings. So we'll take a look at the next one. Uh, ignore this oil. Uh, this wasn't from the build. It, when I pulled the head off and flipped it upside down, some of this oil here dripped on here, so we're not going to pay attention to that. But we do have a pretty significant carbon layer on here that, that is a little damp. I'm going to call that more of a little bit more of a rich fuel mixture uh, than anything. Now we take a nice peek here on the inside. Uh, we do have we do have a good bit of oil on the crank and the crank itself there's quite a tight spot in this crank right there so it appears yes we had a sumping issue on this one as well um but i i can't say that it's going to be definitely because of because of cylinder and uh piston clearance or ring seal so i'm gonna predict that we're going to have an issue with this crank because even at this point here the crank begins to lock up on me so this could be one that has uh, because of a a crooked crank affecting the oil pump then you get some backup aeration cavitation of the pump Now let's take a look at the tappets. Roller looks good. Roller feels tight. No excessive wear. Same. Same. And same, actually wearing really nice. This is a good sign, Ken. We may not have to, we may not have to use an oversized lifter. Let's check it and see with our new soon to be released Skunk Works Tappet Fit Kit. All right, we're gonna start with one of our standard size test fit tappets. Should be, it should drop straight through the hole, be a slip fit, no shake. And we have that on the standard. We're gonna go up a size, just one thousandths, to see if a one thousandths will slide directly into place. And a one thou does, under its own weight, slip fit, no shake. Slip fit, no shake. Slip fit, no shake.
and slip fit no shake. Just to test it, let's go to the next size up, which is going to be a one and a half thousandths. One and a half fits there. One and a half there. One and a half there. And one and a half there. Slip fit, no shake, one and a half thousandths fits full travel under its own weight. So I would imagine with having that excessive clearance on his lifter bores, Ken, you probably had a little bit more top end noise than you probably should have had. It would have been a bit noisy. So we're actually going to run our brand new, soon to be released, Skunk Works Precision Tappets. And these will be at one and a half thousandths oversize. Oh yeah. Not too much wear on the tensioner. Now, one of the things we want to pay attention to, you know, I'd mentioned there were some changes between, you know, we looked at 2007, we've done a 2009 model, we've done several in between. If there was a change in 2011, this one being a 2013. If you'll notice, there are, there are no more bushings in the wrist pin here for the on the top of the connecting rod, so it's wrist pin directly there. It's still a sta tapered top rod. And another change was to the cam plate. They removed the bronze bushing from the pinion shaft so now it's basically aluminum directly onto the uh, steel pinion shaft of the crank. Now let's analyze. So the cams themselves, uh, the cams are wearing exceptionally well as we saw on the rollers. Matches up, looks nice. There's our tensioner. Inside the cam plate here, uh, it does have a little more wear on one side than it does on the other. And you'll notice around the perimeter here, it's mushroomed out just a little bit and more than it is on that side. So let's uh, see what our crank run out here. So now I have a curiosity as to what the inside of the oil pump potentially looks like. We do have a little bit of play in the gear rotor here, or a little side to side. It's not extremely excessive though. It's not, uh, it's not terrible. Okay, for crank run out, we have five. We have right at 10 thousandths. That's what I was saying, guys. When we started on the top end of this thing, you know, I see oil on the top. We're not sure why that oil's there. It could be piston ring seal, uh, various different reasons. It could be from something, crank picking up oil, pumping it up into the cylinders, over lubricating, and then that oil gets on top of the piston. But we didn't see, uh, you know, we didn't see a, a tremendous, uh, any real damage or any cause for concern on the inside of the cylinders. So I didn't think that it was going to be a crankcase pressure issue that could have potentially caused the sumping issue in this one. So it looks to me like it's crank run out. And of course, we look at the cam plate. We saw on one side of the cam plate where it has that bit of a mushroom on that one side right there and the uneven wear inside the bore would indicate some excessive run out. And then we also saw the, the play in the gear rotor on the pump, uh, how some side to side there. Again, that's the 10th out run out on that pinion shaft working that, and it's quite possible that that could have, again, aerated the oil, back up the oil a little bit, cavitate inside the pump, and then you get even more aeration and cavitation because the oil's hitting the crank. And let's see how much oil we've got coming out here, guys. Well, she's still draining. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah we're still. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're we're draining quite a bit. Oh yeah. All right, and there we go, friends. Not a lot of big surprises in this one, right? But again, what, re remember what we're doing here. We're looking for a pattern. We're looking for clues that can help diagnose issues. Now, uh, Ken, I had forgotten, Ken did have a set of cams put in this one. I can see that he did upgrade to Torrington inner cam bearings, which of course is part of the build. We're, we're gonna be changing that. And the cylinders and pistons, looked pretty good you know, had a pretty decent ring seal we still had a something issue and of course we found out that that was because of 10 thousandths run out it's good that he caught it when he did because over time what would have happened again all of that oil slinging up into the cylinder would only have continued to wash the cylinder walls out more the pump would have cavitated more from the aerated oil and and it would eventually led to disaster so 10 thousandths run out on the crank would be the reason for a sumping issue in this one. The one thing I would also like for you to pay attention to, notice on every bike that we have pulled the engine apart that was sumping, how dark and black the oil was. Okay, it's getting extremely hot because of that. The only exception was one engine. When we tore it down, you'll notice how some of the oil came out extremely black and some of it looked like it was somewhat clear. That was a recent oil change on that engine, and the black oil that you saw coming out was more like sludge, where it had collected in there over time. Again, when he did his oil change, all of that sludgy oil was in the bottom of the cam chest and the case, and doing an oil change clears the pan, not the case. So anyway, that said, the next one, we've got another twin cam to do, then we start getting into the M8s, guys. So Ken, thanks a million. This is yours going together. And guys, well, I appreciate you watching. If uh, you want to check out all of the next videos, or if this is the first one you've seen, jump back a few videos in this series. Be sure to smash that subscribe button if you don't mind. You know, like over 80% of our, our views come from people that aren't subscribed. And I think a lot of people are missing the content simply because I read the, the comments that they leave. And most of those comments were, were addressed in a previous video or one or two previous videos so if you'll hit that bell for me as well if you think i've earned it so you'll get all notifications for the next video and as always guys thanks a million take care of yourselves and each other have a good one